Hello friends, the 617th day of the war between Russia and Ukraine continues. Key battles continue near Avdiivka, where Ukrainian armed forces are steadfastly holding their defense, according to the commander of the Southern Front, Tarnavsky. The general staff states that the Russians unsuccessfully tried to attack seven times in the Siverne and Pervomaisky areas. The Ukrainian military telegram channel Deep State writes that the situation in the Avdiivka area remains difficult. The enemy, due to the large number of infantry, supported mainly by artillery and aviation, continues to put pressure on the position of the defense forces. The enemy is establishing positions on and near the west hip despite the constant defeat by FPV drones and artillery from Ukrainian fighters. The Russians are trying to enter the territory of Avdiivka coke plant and cross the railway in the Krasnogorivka area, but they cannot gain a foothold and are forced to either run away or die. Krasnogorivka itself is turning into an important stronghold where the enemy is establishing logistics. North of Krasnogorivka, the enemy managed to advance beyond the railway towards Novokolinove. Apparently, in this way, the Russians are trying to expand their wedge zone in order to protect their flanks. On the southern front, the Russians continue attacks from the surrounding villages with the help of small groups in order to divert the defense forces from the main direction of attack. The situation is difficult. The enemy is constantly applying pressure in the Opetne, Vodyane and Pervomaisky areas. The Russians are storming with large number of infantry, constantly pressing our position and trying to achieve success through attrition. The concentration of enemy forces remain high. How long they will last is unknown. My robot friend will continue further. Data is also confirmed that Ukraine transferred the 47th Mechanized Brigade with Leopard tanks to Avdiivka from the southern direction. The Build newspaper wrote about this after analyzing the video recordings received. The author of the article, military expert Repke, recalls that initially these German tanks were transferred to liberate the south of Ukraine, from which he concludes that the 47th Mechanized Brigade was redeployed from the Zaporizhia region to the Donetsk region. And this also indicates that the counteroffensive in the south has at least been put on a long pause. Meanwhile, at the front, the Russians can expect a significant reinforcement of ammunition. North Korea has transferred more than a million artillery shells to Russia, Bloomberg reports. It is believed that this will be enough for about two months based on the current level of ammunition consumption. Bloomberg recalls that Pyongyang has one of the world's largest reserves of artillery shells and missiles compatible with Soviet-era weapons used by Russia. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Zaluzhny, wrote an article about the threat of the war turning into a positional one which, in his opinion, will benefit Russia since it will then have time to restore its military power. The material was published on the pages of the British magazine The Economist. It is entitled The Commander-in-Chief of Ukraine's Armed Forces on What He Needs to Defeat Russia. According to Zaluzhny, positional warfare is long-term and carries enormous risks for the armed forces of Ukraine and its state. If Ukraine is to escape this trap, we will need air superiority, vastly improved electronic warfare and counter-battery capabilities, new mine clearance technologies, and the ability to mobilize and train more reserves, he writes. Zaluzhny argues for the listed needs by the fact that the Russian army in these areas has either an advantage or parity with the Ukrainian army. Over the past decade, Russia has modernized its electronic warfare forces, creating a new branch of the military and creating 60 new types of equipment. In this area, it surpasses us. 65% of our jamming platforms at the beginning of the war were produced during the Soviet era, the commander-in-chief writes. According to him, Russia was able to dramatically reduce the effectiveness of weapons such as the Excalibur guided missile thanks to its electronic warfare. 
the Ukrainian army managed to achieve artillery parity with Russia due to more accurate firepower. But this may not last long, writes Zaluzhny. The reason is that the Russians have improved counterbattery warfare. This was largely due to the use of lancet loitering munitions, which work in conjunction with reconnaissance drones, as well as increased production of precision-guided projectiles that are guided by ground spotters. Despite the dismissive opinion of some military analysts, we cannot downplay the effectiveness of Russian weapons and intelligence in this regard, Zaluzhny writes. As for mine clearance, Western supplies proved to be insufficient given the scale of Russian minefields, which stretch for 20 kilometers in some places. When we break through minefields, Russia quickly replenishes them by launching new mines from a distance, the commander-in-chief says. He also demands more intelligence from the West and help with the production of electronic warfare systems. We also need greater access to electronic intelligence from our allies, including signals intelligence, as well as expanded production lines for our counter-drone electronic warfare systems in Ukraine and abroad, Zaluzhny writes. The last problem is the replenishment of manpower. There are gaps in our legislation that allow citizens to evade their responsibilities. We are trying to correct these problems. We are introducing a unified register of conscripts. We must expand the category of citizens who can be called up for training or mobilization. We are also introducing a combat internship, which involves the placement of newly mobilized and trained personnel in experienced combat units for their training, the commander-in-chief said. He also writes that Russia should not be underestimated and it will have superiority in weapons, equipment, missiles, and ammunition for a considerable time. Its defense industry is increasing production despite unprecedented sanctions. Our NATO partners are also dramatically increasing their production capacity. But this will take at least a year, and in some cases, as in the case of aviation and control systems, even two years, writes Zaluzhny. Later, The Economist published a new text with Commander-in-Chief Zaluzhny, this time in interview format. One of Zaluzhny's main messages is that most likely there will not be a deep and beautiful breakthrough. Just like in the First World War, we have reached a level of technological development that puts us, Ukraine and Russia, at a dead end, he says. The simple fact is that we see everything the enemy does, and they see everything we do. To break this impasse, we need to invent something fundamentally new. Just like the Chinese once invented gunpowder, he says. Recognizing the deadlock at the front, Zaluzhny actually confirms an insider from Time magazine, which wrote that the military command proposes at this stage to abandon offensive actions in view of the deadlock at the front and the futility of attacking actions. Let me remind you that Time wrote that Zelensky does not agree with this approach and insists on continuing the offensive. Zaluzhny also admitted that the strategy of bleeding the Russian army was a mistake. It was my mistake. Russia lost at least 150,000 people killed. In any other country, such losses would have stopped the war, Zaluzhny said. It is interesting that the figure he cites is half the number of dead Russians reported by the general staff every day. According to the department, more than 300,000 of them have already been killed in Ukraine. Ukrainians, according to the already mentioned Time article, about 100,000 people died. By the way, Zaluzhny essentially admitted great losses not only in Russia, but also in Ukraine. According to him, the offensive actions of both sides are proceeding with significant difficulties and heavy losses in equipment and personnel. Zaluzhny also admitted that the counteroffensive went against the calculations of the Ukrainian armed forces and NATO textbooks. If you look at the NATO textbooks and the mathematical calculations that we did, four months should have been enough for us to get to Crimea, fight in Crimea, return from Crimea, and get in and out again, the general said. According to him, it was assumed that the Ukrainian armed forces would advance in the south at a speed of 30 kilometers per day, but in fact in four months the total advance was 17 kilometers. At first I thought there was something wrong with our commanders, so I changed some of them. Then I thought maybe our soldiers were no good, so I transferred soldiers to some brigades, says Zaluzhny. 
But then Zaluzhny found a Soviet textbook on breaking through the fortifications of the First World War. I realized that this is exactly where we are, because, as then, the level of technological development today has stunned both us and our opponents. Winning, according to Zaluzhny, can be achieved either through some major technological breakthrough, but there are no signs that it can be expected soon. Or due to superiority in key types of weapons, which the Ukrainian army also does not have. The general says that Russia is currently capable of maintaining superiority in weapons and equipment, missiles and ammunition for a significant period of time. At the same time, the capabilities of the Russian military industry are increasing, despite the sanctions. In particular, by the end of 2023, Russia can increase the number of aviation to eight divisions. These are hundreds of planes and helicopters, said the commander-in-chief. Friends, please support my channel if you like the video I provide, because making video is my full-time job. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.